Hello, dear students. Welcome to this second exercise lesson, which we will pick up exactly from when we left off in the previous lesson. Um, we were talking about uh, the calculation of the quantities of the substances uh, or the calculation of the, of the quantity of the elements contained in the substances. So uh, let's continue. Let's get started. Calculate the weight percentage of nitrogen. Ammonium nitrate and H O and O three. Perfect. Uh, before I start the exercise. I would like to say a few words regarding this compound. Maybe uh, the most of you has already recognized uh, this compound as a, a salt by its name. We are talking about uh, a nitrate. Nitrate is the name of a salt, of course. But if we take a look only on the formula of this compound, we can see something particular not strange, but particular, because this is a salt without a metal that doesn't contain a metal. Usually, uh, we are we used to recognize salts by watching the first element of the formula. If the first element of the formula is a metal, a metal atom, uh, we are in the right path to uh, recognize a salt. After we have to watch uh, the 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 other part of the formula, of course. And if the other part of the formula is a, a no-metal atom or a no-metal group of atoms, accepted oxygen and hydroxyl group, accepted uh, oxygen and hydroxyl group, uh, we, we can uh, be sure that we are considering a salt uh, I accepted oxygen and uh, hydroxyl group because uh, they are forming with the metal, uh, of course, an oxide and an hydroxide that are different from a salt. Um, this salt is particular because, uh, as said, hasn't metal inside, but at it can be uh, seen derived from an acid base reaction between ammonia and nitric acid. In this way, this consideration doesn't uh, uh, regard. Uh, the, the solution of the exercise, of course. And um, so, as all the salts, it is an ionic compound. Uh, and what are the ions contained in this compound? The ions are the NH4 plus monovalent cation named ammonium ion or ammonium cation and the anion is the NO3 minus monovalent anion derived uh, from the uh, nitric acid. 
it is a, a very common substance because uh, is largely used in the agricultural field as a fertilizer. Okay. We can go on. To, uh, to solve the exercise. Okay. Uh, the text of the exercise uh, asks us to calculate the percentage of the nitrogen in this case, but could be the same thing uh, for uh, for any element of the, the compound. And uh, mm, if we remember the previous exercise, um, the exercise in which uh, we had to calculate the quantity of the hydrogen and oxygen contained in uh, one gram of water, um, here we we can um, we can we, we can see something different because uh, uh, the text of the exercise doesn't give us uh, some quantity to start to start with to which stop. So uh, there's no problem, of course, because we are searching for percentage. Percentage, as you know, are not linked to any quantity in particular. So we can decide uh, a comfortable value for the quantity uh, to which start with. And uh, I think the best, the best uh, value we can, we can choose is 100. That is the base of the, per the percentage. So, I can write, I consider 100 grams of the compound. Perfect. So, I can calculate the mole of this compound, mole of uh, I will refer to the compound as a salt, um, so I can avoid to write every every time uh, the formula of this salt is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass of the substance, okay? Equal to 100, the value I decided. I have to calculate the molar mass of the salt. So, I can write here. Molar mass equal to, okay, we have two atoms of nitrogen in the formula, so, we have to consider 2 multiplying the molar mass of the nitrogen. Uh, as you remember, you can go to the periodic table and uh, find out the value relating to the nitrogen and applying to him the um, unit of measurement grams per mole. Simple. Fourteen point zero one is the uh, molar mass we we choose to use the um, uh, approximation we choose to use for uh, nitrogen and for the other elements we we will treat during the, our ex exercise. Uh, two numbers after the point uh, are enough for our uh, needing. So. Plus, there are four atoms of hydrogen, so four that is multiplying 1.01 plus three multiplying the molar mass of the oxygen, 16.
equal to I did this calculation before, so uh, we can avoid to waste the time. We obtain eighty point zero five gram per mole. So you can use this number here. We will obtain 1.25 mole. Okay, considering 100 gram of the compound, we are considering 1.525 moles of the same compound. I think now I can erase it here. I'm searching for the percentage of uh, nitrogen. So I can calculate from uh, this value the moles of the nitrogen contained in the compound. And prices, please. They are moles of nitrogen equal to. There are two atoms of nitrogen in a unit of formula of this uh, compound. So I can write that the moles of nitrogen are two times the moles of the salt. Equal to 2.50 moles. Now, from this value, I can calculate uh, what is the mass of the nitrogen contained in the 100 gram of the salt by using this, this formula, but in this way, mass of nitrogen equals to molar mass of nitrogen multiplying the mole. I have calculated equal the molar mass of the nitrogen is 14.01 multiplying 2.50 equal to 30.5 Zero two, no zero five. Sorry, I have inverted the, the number thirty five point zero two. Perfect. So, as I choose the base of my calculation, this is just the percentage I'm searching for. And let you see. I can do this, okay. To define the percentage of nitrogen, I can write mass of nitrogen divided by the mass of the compound of the salt multiplied by 100. But the mass of the salt is 100. So numerically, the mass of the nitrogen is equal to the percentage. And this is uh, the, the comfortable, um, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the reason we used 100 as a base of, of the calculation. So 35.02,
divided by 100 multiplied by 100 equal to 35.02%. By weight. And so, uh, in these uh, few passages, uh, we have uh, we have given the the result of the exercise, the exercise as uh, uh, the text uh, requested. This is a a procedure that can be used ever. But uh, this exercise gives me opportunity to show you uh, another way to solve the exercise. Uh, another way faster and more precise. More precise, but I, I will explain you better after I finished my calculation. So, calculate the same thing using the, a different method, an alternative method that I defined faster. I can calculate the percentage directly with only one passage. Doing this. Now I will, uh, I will uh, demonstrate you what uh, uh, why uh, um, this thing works, why this thing is true. To calculate the percentage, I have only to consider the molar mass of the element, in this case of the nitrogen. So the molar mass of nitrogen and the, of the salt are already defined, molar mass of nitrogen 14.1 gram per mole, molar mass of the salt equals 80.05 gram per mole. Okay, so here in the numerator of this ratio, I have to write the molar mass of the nitrogen that is multiplying the same number of the nitrogen atoms appears in the formula. In this case, this number is two. So I have to multiply two times. Uh, um, I have to consider two times the molar mass of nitrogen divided by the molar mass of the salt. Then multiplying this ratio uh, by 100 to obtain the percentage, of course. So here I can uh, write uh, 2 multiplying 14.01 that is divided by the molar mass of the salt equal to 18.05 multiplying 100. If you do the calculation, you can find that this, uh, uh, this equation is equal to 35.00 person. Exactly or better. The same number we have obtained uh, in the
the previous uh, methods used, there's a little difference between the two numbers. 200 of difference. And by the, uh, the method we used, we can consider this number more precise uh, to the respect of this one. Why? Because in this method we have used um, a fewer number of steps of calculation. You have to remember that the fewer are the steps of calculation, the lower is the uh, error we, we obtain in the final result, the approximation error. But uh, I can tell you, I consider uh, both the methods uh, good to pass the exam. So it will be your choice uh, if you use, uh, whether you use the, um, the first or the second. For me, uh, are equal. Okay. We can go on. We can proceed to the next, next topic. Yes, regards. Okay, the writing. The next topic we, we are going to consider is the writing of the formula of a compound. Uh, as you know, the formula of a compound um, gives us information, qualitative and quantitative information. Um, indicates the, the type, finally, the, the type of the atoms that are uh, made, made, making up the compound and uh, uh, the exact number uh, in which the, these atoms really appear in the compound, in the structure, structural unit of the compound. This structural, structural unit could be a molecule or not a molecule, or simply a, an array of atoms, as in the ion, uh, ionic, uh, ionic compound. Ionic compound, this is the, the right accent. Um, so, what we need to define the formula of the compound? We need a, uh, mainly two informations. We need the uh, percentages by weight uh, of all the elements that are contained in the compound, and uh, this, uh, this data comes from uh, uh, so-called elemental uh, analysis. Analysis that uh, is possible to perform uh, in, a, in a device called uh, spec spectrophotometer by atomic absorption. Um, the, second, uh, the second information we need to, to write uh, the formula of compound uh, is the molar mass of the unknown compound. And uh, the molar mass of unknown compound could be uh, measured with another device called spectrometer of mass. So with these two information, we are able to write uh, the formula of an unknown compound. I think it's better to, uh, to do some exercises because uh, um, <laughs> they are better to 1,000 words. Okay. Uh, From the elemental or elemental, the same element, element uh, with 
analysis. of a compound we obtain depth it is composed only of the elements carbon and hydrogen which are respectively in 92.24% and 7.76% by mass. A. Calculate the formula of the unknown compound B calculate Knowing that its molar mass knowing that its molar, molar mass is equal Equal to twenty six point zero three eight gram per mole. There's another point, but uh, I think I'll write. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Uh, I was saying there's another point, but uh, I think I will write uh, it uh, next because uh, it's, it's too long, <laughs> the text of this uh, exercise. But it is useful to, to really understand what we are going to do.
Okay. From the elementary analysis of a compound, we obtain that it is composed only of the elements carbon and hydrogen. So we have we are considering uh, uh, a binary element uh, and uh, hydro hydrocarbon, of course, uh, which 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 are present respectively in 92.24% uh, and 7.76% uh, by mass. Calculate the empirical formula of the unknown compound. Calculate the molecular formula of the compound knowing that its molar mass is equal to this value, uh, the unit of measurement uh, uh, ah, is, uh, disappeared, but gram per mole. Okay, perfect. What is the empirical formula uh, to which the, the point A are referring? The empirical formula is uh, uh, a partial. Uh, representation of a formula of a compound in which we obtain to which we obtain essentially uh, two information and a qualitative information we are finally uh, knowing that uh, the, the element contains uh, carbon and hydrogen and see and so by the empirical formula we can know this by the symbol of the two elements. And then the empirical formula, empirical formula um, uh, can um, indicate the, uh, the numerical ratio between the elements contained in the compound, but not exactly the number in which these elements are present in the molecule. Of the compound. So we can know only the ratio between them in this case, but not the exact number, uh, exact number uh, in, in which they appear in the in the molecular formula. The molecular formula is the the version, uh, the, the complete version of uh, a formula in which we obtain to which we obtain also this information. Um, how many are the atoms exactly in the, mole in the molecule of the substance or in the unit of formula if we are talking about uh, of a substance that is not molecular as uh, uh, the salt uh, previously uh, considered that is an Ionic uh, compound and uh, ionic compound are not molecular. The ionic ionic bond um, doesn't form molecules. So we can proceed. I have to see the the value. Okay, we start from the percentages by weight of the compound. So, I can write, I consider 100 grams of the, of the unknown compound. So, considering 100 uh, permits me to, uh, to write directly the, the mass, which equals numerically equal to uh, the percentages. So, the, uh, the mass of the carbon is equal to 92.5. The mass of the hydrogen is equal 
is entry to the percentage of the hydrogen, 7.76 grams. Perfect. I can first calculate the mold of these two elements. The mold of the carbon contained in the compound are equal to 92.24 divided by the molar mass of the carbon. Equal, I have to do this calculation. Okay, I obtain 7.68 mold. For the hydrogen, I obtain 7.6801. The same value. Now, what we have to do? Now we have to do a very simple thing. We have, we have, to, we have to use these two numbers to, uh, to start the, the, the writing of the formula. As said, we, we can obtain the empirical formula, that is a partial uh, information regarding the molecular formula, but we have to pass necessary to the empirical formula, the calculation of the empirical formula. And um, I can write, in, the, in this case, a rough formula, writing this in this way, I put C in the first place, because we know that hydrocarbons um, should have the carbon as uh, the first element. So, C, H, what I did, I have used the the molds of the elements obtained, previously obtained, as a subscript of the formula, of the rough formula, because now we have to work uh, on this formula to make these two numbers, the coefficients of the two elements, the smallest whole number as possible but uh, maintaining, keeping constant, the numerical ratio between the two elements. To obtain this result, I only, uh, you, I, I can only use uh, uh, two operations. Product and division, because these two operations uh, keep constant the numerical ratio between the two elements. In this case, I have to divide the two numbers with seven. Point six eight.
reports we obtain, we obtain CH, in which the coefficients of the elements are the smallest whole number as possible. Uh, here we have a particular case because the two coefficients of the of the elements are equal, and so uh, it is. Uh, uh, it was uh, um, normal divide div the dividing of both the number with uh, <laughs> with the the, the the same number, but. Um, in, in another case, in another different cases, when uh, the coefficients of the elements are different one from each other, or we can have also, we can have, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, different compound with three, four, or more elements. Okay, now we are considering uh, uh, a simple case, but uh, usually, or well, the best thing we can do when the coefficients are different one from each other in another type of uh, hydrocarbon uh, for example uh, we have to divide uh, uh, both the numbers uh, by the the smaller the smaller number of the two and after uh, we'll see what we we can do uh, to make both the numbers, as I said, uh, the the smallest whole number as possible. This is the empirical formula. This formula says that the, the, the compound is composed by carbon and hydrogen and their uh, numerical ratio is, the, is equal to one to one, one to one. But with this formula, we cannot, um, we cannot indicate precisely um, uh, any, any kind of compound. Uh, because we don't know um, how how many are in uh, uh, for real uh, in the in the molecules the carbon and the hydrogen this uh, this uh, additional uh, information comes from the knowing of the molar mass I'll show you Okay, so we can answer to the, the point B, and we can write that the molecular formula uh, has to have this form, X multiplying the empirical formula. This means the x is an unknown number, is an unknown whole number. Uh, a number that we have to, to calculate, of course. Uh, the molecular formula could have only this form because this is the form that respect the num numerical ratio defined by the empirical formula. How can we calculate uh, 
uh, the, this unknown number in a very simple way. It's easy to demonstrate that the x is equal to the ratio between the molar mass of the compound measured in the in the laboratory. So the molar mass that uh, I usually call real, and this and this the molar mass given by the exercise, the text of the exercise, divided by molar mass of the empirical formula. This ratio give us, gives us the value of the x I'm searching for. So, I can let uh, the demonstration of this thing as a homework for you, if you want, of course. And uh, could be useful uh, starting to, to, to do something by yourself. After, you can ask me, of course, by email uh, uh, or in another, uh, some other Okay, so this is the, the value measured, as I said, and given by the text of the exercise. So I can put here, divided by the, as I said, the molar mass of the empirical formula. The molar mass of the empirical formula here is equal to 12.01 plus 1.01 equals to 13.02 gram per mole. But uh, this doesn't mean anything in a, in a, in a re for real for real. Uh, it's only a passage we need to define the x. This is the real value. 13.02 equal to, I, I want to do exactly this, this uh, calculation because I will tell you something. 26.03. Is the rising, okay. but I was thinking it's not necessary because I have just used two numbers uh, of approximation in my calculation. So this real mass, I directly could write in this way, obtaining clearly two. Um, For doing the, the precise, more precise calculation uh, with the calculator, um, I had to use uh, three, three uh, uh, numbers after the point, as using 12.011 as reported in the periodic table for carbon and 1.008 as reported in the periodic table for the hydrogen. But I don't want to, to, to make um, heavy the calculation, so we can continue to use two, uh, two terms up after the point, okay? Good, so finally I can write that the molecular formula is equal to uh, I put the number here now x 
is uh, a well-known number, and the molecular formula is this one. This is the formula of the of a gas, of a combustible gas, well known as acetylene or gas eating. Maybe the pronunciation is not uh, really the right, but okay. Now we can see the point C. Point C was calculate the empirical no calculate I'm reading it calculate the molecular mass of Ah, okay. I'm reading the, the the wrong line. Calculate the molecular uh, formula. Considering considering the molar mass is equal to Seventy-eight point one one four gram grams per mole. Okay, so we have to do the same thing um, just did in the point B, but considering this different value for the molar mass, we have obtained that the. In practice, we have only to to do again this part of the of the calculation, and so we did, and so we are going to do x. In this case, is equal to m real divided by m empirical. Equal to, in this case, M real is equal to seven eight point one one four divided by the empirical, uh, the molar mass of the empirical formula we have just uh, defined thirteen point zero. Two. If you do the calculation, you will obtain six. So in this case, the molecular formula is equal to C six H six. Substituting the the, the value to the to the x here. Mm. This could be the formula, except that the, the isomer 
This could be the formula of the benzene, well-known hydrocarbon. This exercise show us that uh, different different uh, types of compound could have the same empirical formula. So the empirical formula cannot uh, indicate um, uh, a defined compound, but could be representative uh, of a, uh, a number of different compounds. Okay. Let's go on. too much. of a compound sample of a compound establishes that and 7.85 grams of oxygen. Knowing that the molar mass of this compound is equal to 122.45 grams per mole. Write the molecular Okay, the elemental or elementary analysis of the sample of a compound establishes that it is made up of 2.82 grams of sodium, 4.35 grams of chlorine, and 7.85 grams of oxygen. Knowing that the molar mass 
is equal to 122.45 grams per mole. Write the molecular formula of the compound. Here, if we take a look to the, the element uh, suggested by the, the text of the exercise, you could, we could think that we have to consider uh, a salt, maybe a salt. So this definition of molecular formula uh, could be taken as a, uh, indicative not of a molecule, but uh, of a, a unit of formula. Maybe the, the text of the exercise uh, could, uh, could be more precise using uh, uh, in, 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 instead the molecular formula uh, using the, uh, the definition of unit of formula. But uh, it is not a problem because uh, usually we use, we are, uh, uh, we usually we use the molecular for the definition uh, of molecular formula only as a name not uh, indicating uh, uh, necess ne necessary a, a, a real molecule, okay? But to be more precise, we, we, uh, we should consider uh, instead the molecular, the definition of a molecular formula, the definition of unit of formula without molecular, but uh, I remember me. Uh, I repeat me. Um, it's it's only a name. So in this case, we don't have uh, percentages, but we have directly masses. It's not a problem. We can uh, obtain the mode directly from these masses. So I can write mass of sodium equal to two point eight. Mass of chlorine equal to 4.35 gram. Mass of oxygen equal to uh, 7.85 gram. So I can calculate immediately the mold moles of sodium equals to the mass divided by the molar mass of sodium that we can consider equals to 21.00. Moles of chlorine equals to 4.35 divided by the molar mass of chlorine. Uh, you can go to the periodic table obtaining that the mass, the molar mass of chlorine is equal to 35.45, and then the moles of the oxygen equals to the mass of the oxygen divided by the molar mass of the oxygen. In the way we are, we have learned to do. Let me see if I did some calculation. Yes. Good luck. Uh, okay. This ratio is equal to 0 0.123 moles. Uh, this ratio is equal to 0 0.123 moles. And the oxygen uh, gives 0. Maybe I have to do again this calculation because I'm not sure uh, I could do that. Divided by 16. Oh, yes, 0 0.491 moles. Perfect. So we can go on.
now we can use uh, these, uh, these numbers to write the rough formula. I can write Na 0.123 chlor, the chlorine, with the coefficient 0.123, and the oxygen with the coefficient equals to the mold I, I just calculated. Uh, 0.491. Perfect. This is the rough formula from which I start. Okay, as I say, uh, it's useful uh, to, to search the world, uh, the world, uh, the smallest and the world number uh, as a subscript, as coefficient uh, of the element. Uh, it's useful uh, dividing all the numbers with the smallest of the numbers. In this case, the smallest is 0 0.123 because so you can divide all the subscript the coefficients uh, with the same number, of course. So I avoid to alterate the numerical uh, ratio uh, given uh, from the text of the exercise, by the text of the exercise, and uh, what I obtain, what I have obtained, that the coefficient, the coefficient of the sodium, of course, is one coefficient of the the coefficient of chlorine is one two, and coefficient of the oxygen is equal to zero point seven. It's equal to this ratio is equal to uh, three point. Nine, nine, two. Now, I can realize that this number, I can consider this number four, because the def difference uh, between four and this number are in the order of the one hundred, one hundred. 100 is uh, um, so small difference that permits me to consider this number exactly 4. I'm telling you this because uh, in my experience I, um, uh, I have seen a lot of exams, I, I did a lot of exams to uh, your colleagues and sometimes I, I saw uh, uh, some students uh, obtaining uh, from a calculation, uh, for example, uh, 3.65, and uh, considering this number, 4. No, this is wrong. You cannot consider 3.65 equal to 4. Maybe you have to do some other calculation to this number to obtain the whole number you are searching for. Okay? If you have difference in the order of the hundred, uh, okay, you can approximate to the, world, the next world number, of course. In this case, four. So, this is, at the moment, the empirical formula. If someone of you is asking uh, to himself why I have uh, placed the elements in this way, uh, this is only experience. When I have a metal, a metal uh, in many cases, 
I, I have to put the metal in the first place, obtaining the assault, but it's not uh, uh, something that works ever. Uh, so, definitely I am following the, uh, the indication of the, the text of the exercise, maintaining uh, the order proposed by the text. Now, as said, the molecular formula, or in this case, I have, I'm considering uh, something like a salt of, or in any case, I'm considering an ionic compound. Why ionic? Because it is composed by a metal that is bonded with a non-metal group of atoms. And uh, in this situation, uh, the bond, the bond, uh, the existing bond is the ionic, ionic bond. A bond in which the uh, non-metal groups are able to uh, completely um, take electrons from the metal. And so, in this case, maybe we have two ions attracting one from each other. Uh, okay, let's continue. So the molecular formula in this case term, as I said, I continue to use despite this is uh, uh, this is not a molecule. has to have this form. That means <coughs> that the x is multiplying all the coefficients of the element. Uh, to be more clear. So the x should be the ratios between the molar mass of the real compound measured in the in the in the in the lab divided by the molar mass of the empirical formula. This value is given by the exercise and is okay. 122.45 divided the molar mass of the empirical formula. So, if we do the sum between 23, the molar mass of the sodium, 35.45, uh, the molar mass of the uh, chlorine, and uh, 4 multiplying 16, the molar mass of the oxygen, we obtain in practice the same value. So, in this case, x is equal to 1. This is a very simple exercise that um, shows that uh, in some cases, empirical formula and molecular formula are equal. This is not so rare when we are talking about also Now I can't, but uh, by this uh, this uh, demonstration, now I can tell that I'm, we are considering a perchlorate, uh, sodium perchlorate, sodium perchlorate. Okay.
Cauldron Oxide contains six point nine nine grams of iron obtain the formula of the oxide. Okay, what we have to do now? We know that the compound is an oxide, so a, a binary compound composed by iron and oxygen. We don't have the mass of the oxygen, but we can easily calculate the mass of the oxygen by the difference of the mass of the, the whole compound minus the mass of the iron contained in the compound. So I can write mass of oxygen equal to mass of the oxide minus the mass of the iron. And so I obtain 10 minus uh, 6.9. Equals to 3.01 grams. Now I can start my calculation because I have mass of iron 6.99 grams, mass of oxygen 16.01 grams, and so I can. mass by the molar mass of the elements. Uh, in this case, as I remember well, the molar mass of the iron is 55.85. And this value is, I hope I did this calculation. No, I have to do. Uh, Six point nine nine divided by sixteen point eight five zero point one two five moles. In the case of the oxygen, I obtain three point zero one divided by sixteen. Three point zero one divided by 16, 0 0.1 moles. Good. Let's go to write the rough formula. Iron, 0 0.125. Oxygen, 0. To, to divide both the numbers with the smallest, that is 0 0.125, 0 0.125. So we obtain FeO, This is, this is the number I have obtained from this ratio, but what I, can, what I can say, the first, I can consider this number equal to 1.5 because 
there was only four four thousand of difference between the world number and of course this is 1.5 but in this case we we cannot hand this work here because we still have not obtained it we don't we don't have uh, obtained it um, the the um, all the all the coefficients that are world number yet so what we can do we just have used the division we only can use product to make this number uh, both the world number and um, now it's clear that I have to multiply both the coefficients by two so I can obtain Now I can consider this uh, this formula uh, uh, something good to to propose. Okay. So this uh, uh, this exercise show that uh, not ever we can end our work doing this uh, this ratios this. Division, divisions, and uh, this is the, the the formula of the oxide we are searching for. We don't have other information because this is a compound uh, uh, to which the molecular formula and the empirical formula are equals. So uh, the exercise. Uh, doesn't give us molar mass and avoiding to uh, to to lose the time um, this compound is called ferric oxide why ferric because in this compound the iron take the highest uh, number of oxidation uh, it could it, it can it can take um, if we put minus two as uh, number of oxidation uh, of the oxygen uh, the number of oxidation of the iron should be has to be not should but has to be plus three so this is ferric oxide differently if we were considering this other type uh, of oxide this is a ferrous oxide because in this case iron takes the uh, the number the smallest number of oxidation it, it can take ferrous ferric seems to me five by uh, but it's not important a compound is made up of 
only carbon hydrogen and oxygen and has molar mass of 90.09 From its decomposition, five point five eight grams of water. Three point seven two grams of carbon are formed calculate the molecular. Formula of that compound. Nothing at all. Uh, no. Okay. A compound is made up of only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and there's molar mass of 19.09 uh, grams per mole. From its decomposition, this quantity of water is formed and this quantity of carbon is formed. Calculate the molecular formula of that compound. This exercise is, 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 interesting, is nice uh, or interesting because uh, uh, propose us something different between the previous the previous ones. Um, the text of the exercise uh, doesn't give us the quantity of the elements contained in the compound, but uh, uh, lead us to consider the, mm, the, the products of uh, a, a decomposition reaction. What is a decomposition reaction? Uh, it's uh, uh, a chemical uh, reaction in which the reactant is only one. And uh, by environmental effect of the system in which the, the reactant, the single reactant, uh, is placed, uh, the reaction takes place some bonds of the of the molecule are broken and uh, giving rise to two or three or more different new substances okay so in this case i can i can write something only to show you what what i'm saying um, the molecule contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So, the the generic formula of this uh, of this compound could be CX uh, H uh, Y and O zeta. These are generic coefficients unknown at this moment. A moment now, unknown. Now, um, and a decomposition is a sort of a reaction with a, this single reactant that become 
In this case, water and pure carbon. What we know is the quantity of these two products deriving from the, the decomposition. Of course, uh, I have written uh, this uh, chemical equation only in a qualitative form. It is not balanced. The balancing of the reaction will be the next next uh, topic. Uh, in this case, I would like only to show you something qualitative. And uh, maybe uh, it is not uh, necessary for the, uh, the solution of the, the resolution of the exercise to writing something like this, but I think it's useful for you now. So the data from what from which I start are mass of the water generated by the decomposition of the unknown compound equal to 5.58 grams. The mass of the carbon derived from the, the same decomposition is 3.72 grams. Perfect. As we know in stoichiometry, we don't know, we don't we don't do um, calculation directly on the mass. So we can fast pass uh, to the mole. The moles of water producted are equal to five point the mass of the water divided by the molar mass of the water. Molar mass of the water are 16 plus 2.02. The, the weight of the the weight of two atoms of hydrogen, so total eighteen point zero two, and this value is I have to calculate five point five eight divided by eighteen point zero two equals to zero point three three zero nine uh, six of course we write zero three one moles the mole of carbon equals to three point seven two divided by twelve Point zero one. This calculation gives three one means the value of twelve point zero one. The same number. Perfect. Now, what we have to do to obtain what Zex is asking us? Simply, we have to consider the conservation of the mass law of Lavoisier that said us that during the, uh, a reaction, the mass, the total mass of the substances participating in, in, the, in the reaction doesn't change. The, the sum of the mass of the reactant has to be equal to the sum of the mass of the products. In this case, this, this two masses has to be equal, okay. But this, this law, the, the conservation of the mass law of Lavoisier, uh, was explained a um, few, few years uh, after by Dalton that uh, demonstrate, uh, demonstrate to all the scientists, to all the humanity, that the conservation of the mass of Lavoisier is true because uh, uh, the atoms are, con un are conserved during uh, uh, a chemical reaction. So, all the carbon 
that we have obtained uh, as a product was contained entirely, all the atoms was contained entirely in the, um, in the compound. And the same thing could be, uh, could be said for the water. In particular, for the hydrogen contained in the water, that was hydrogen contained in the compound, and the oxygen, uh, that was oxygen contained in the compound, initially contained in the compound. So, starting from this point, th from this consideration, we can write that uh, the mole of the carbon are just defined, so I haven't to do anything at all. But uh, I have to define the mole, the moles of the hydrogen. That uh, taking a look to the formula of the water, I can uh, understand that the mole of the hydrogen are two times the moles of the water. Every mole of water contains two moles of hydrogen. And so, this is equal to 0 0.62 uh, moles. The mole of the oxygen for the same reason, the coefficient here is 1, are equal to the moles of the, sorry, of the water, 0 0.31 moles. So now I can write my graph formula, C, 0 0.31, H, 0 0.62, uh, oh. 0.31. Dividing by the smaller, we obtain CH2O. And this is the empirical formula. Now uh, we have to uh, define the x. As we already did. Uh, so the x is equal to molar mass real divided by molar mass of empirical formula equal to the molar mass given by the, the text is 90.09 divided by That should be e equal to twelve point zero one plus two point zero two, the two atoms of hydrogen, plus sixteen. The result has to be 13.03 grams per mole. Okay. This ratio is clearly equals to 3. So now we have found the molecular formula that 
is C three H six O three. If I remember well, this could be the formula of uh, of the uh, many many different type of isomer. One of these isomers uh, could be lactic acid, the lactic acid. But I I hope to uh, to do uh, to to do don't do a wrong wrong <laughs> information. Because uh, uh, it's only in my memory. I, I don't have a written here this information, unfortunately. Um, okay, we can go on. We can move on. Next exercises are about the balancing, the writing and the balancing of a chemical reaction. Oh, I never read all the things. Okay, perfect. Um, I remind you, uh, remind you briefly that a chemical reaction, as you know, it's. Uh, uh, a transformation of the matter in which its composition is changing. Um, we uh, usually represent the chemical transformation by chemical equations. Chemical equations are uh, em empirical, empirical and uh, alphanumeric representation of the of, of some uh, natural process, chemical process, and in which we, we can find um, reactants and products, as we have seen uh, in the previous exercise. Uh, precisely, uh, to be more precise, uh, the substances that are present uh, at the beginning of the process in the system in which the process uh, is taking place, the, these substances that are present uh, in the, at the beginning uh, are usually called reactants. And we can find reactants on the left side of the equation, of the chemical equation, of course. Uh, the substances that we can find uh, at the end of the, the chemical transformation uh, are called products. And we can find uh, products on the right side of the chemical equation. The reactants and the products are divided, separated by an arrow that represents the direction in which the uh, to which the, the, the transformation uh, uh, is occurring. Um, we use chemical equation to calculate the quantities of the substances that are participating in a chemical reaction. To um, obtain this calculation, uh, we have first to balance this equation. The balancing of equation uh, of the chemical equation uh, consists uh, in the uh, defining of all the numbers that uh, have placed before every formula of the compounds participating in the, in the chemical reaction, uh, numbers that usually we call stoichiometric coefficients. Uh, the, um, the defining of the stoichiometric coefficients that are all 
uh, integer, and so whole number, positive, positive whole number, uh, were, per, were realized uh, using the conservation uh, of the of the of the the atoms, as we have seen uh, before, uh, as we have considered before. So let's start to do some balancing of uh, chemical equation, and today we will do only balancing by uh, inspection. So uh, I imagine six uh, or I don't remember uh, the number of the exercise. I can write balance by inspection the following chemical reactions The last one. Perfect. Okay. Balance by inspection the following chemical reaction. So we we are going to to use uh, the simplest method we can uh, uh, use uh, to balance an equation. And uh, the ne next, uh, next time we will consider the method related to uh, the balancing of the redox reactions, uh, that is just a little more, more complex, but not so much uh, in any case. And uh, so in the, the balancing of uh, inspection, uh, in Italy we, we used to say balancing by sight, but you, you can tell uh, 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 what you want. Um, we have only to count the atoms, imposing that uh, every element has to be the s in the same number in uh, between the products and between the, uh, the, re the the between the products and between the reactants. Sorry. Here we can say uh, uh, among. Only uh, there are only um, three simple three simple uh, uh, things to to follow in the, the balancing by inspection. The first uh, the first element you have to consider for balancing are the metals. So we have uh, to to balance for first the metals. 
after the metals we have to balance of course the no metals but uh, leaving for penultimate the hydrogen and for the last the, ox the oxygen these are all the, the the rules we have to follow in the balancing by inspection so applying these uh, simple rules uh, for the first equations we have to start from the iron in this equation uh, uh, hydrochloric acid is reacting with the um, hydroxide iron hydroxide in this case ferric hydroxide giving rise to um, uh, a ferric chloride a, a binary salt and water uh, okay starting from the iron what we can see that in uh, mm, uh, um, the, the, the coefficient we can consider in front of iron is one in uh, from the uh, between the reactants and the products so uh, the iron uh, doesn't help me to, to do something more so I can pass to the second element I could uh, consider in this case a no metal and in this case uh, leaving the for penultimate the hydrogen and for the last the oxygen I have to consider chlorine chlorine give, uh, says me something more because uh, here we have three atoms of chlorine uh, I would like to specify something when we write a chemical equation in this in this way we are uh, proposing something qualitative okay Hydro hydrochloric acid plus this uh, hydroxide gives uh, uh, this salt and water okay the uh, coefficients are not uh, equal to one but are undefined I have to consider in this uh, in this um, uh, now right now undefined this question so when I uh, I was considering the, the iron I mentally put one here and one here and I, uh, I, um, I was thinking that uh, I, I could, uh, could go on to consider the chlorine. Here we have three atoms of chlorine, so I have to put three in front of the uh, the entire molecule of the acid to, ob to obtain three atoms of chlorine I cannot do this this thing because in this in this way I'm changing wait I'm changing the molecules the composition of the molecules and I cannot do this perfect so now I can consider the hydrogen here uh, all the the, um, the coefficients are uh, uh, defined one and three so I can count the hydrogen here I have three atoms of hydrogen and here I have uh, three atoms of hydrogen three plus three six atoms of hydrogen in total so here I have to put three in front of um, the, the, the molecules, the, the formula of the water, so we can have three uh, multiplying two, obtaining six atoms, as in the uh, among the reactants. Now I can do, uh, I can't do anything more because all the coefficients are defined. The counting of the oxygen uh, is only a, 
um, a demonstration if I I I did the the right balancing. Here we have three atoms of oxygen, and the, and here we have uh, three atoms of oxygen too. So the balancing is correct. Now I can use this balanced equation, this balanced reaction, to, to do calculation of the quantities of the substance. Now the, the reaction gives us uh, quantitative information. Okay, the second uh, reaction. Here we have a, a ferric carbonate reacting with the nitric acid giving rise to ni uh, um, ferric nitrate and uh, uh, carbonic acid. So here we have, I have to start from uh, the metals. Here we have two atoms of iron, so I can put two in front of this salt. After, okay, I have to consider uh, there are no more metal, and so uh, I, I can pass uh, to the, uh, uh, considering the no metals. And now I can consider nitrogen or carbon uh, for first, after hydrogen and oxygen. Now I, will, I, I want to use uh, to consider nitrogen because I have uh, set the, the find the, the coefficient in front of this uh, formula. So here we have two and uh, the salt is, is composed by uh, three groups of NO3. Uh, this means that we have three uh, multiplying two, six atoms of nitrogen in total, six atoms of nitrogen. So I can put six in front of the molecule containing nitrogen. In this formula there isn't nitrogen, so I can put six all in front of the molecule of the, the nitric acid. Now, uh, I can uh, consider the carbon. Here we have three atoms of carbon. So I have to put three in front of the carbonic acid. And now I have finished. I can check, I, I can control if all works. Now we have six atoms of hydrogen and here we have six atoms of hydrogen. Now we can count, count uh, also the oxygen. Here we have three multiplying three, nine plus six multiplying three, 18, 18 plus nine, 27, 27 uh, atoms of oxygen uh, among the reactants. And here we have three multiplying three, um, nine multiplying two, 18, plus three multiplying three, nine, 18 plus nine, uh, 27, okay. Okay, the reaction is, uh, uh, is balanced in a correct uh, way. Okay, let's consider uh, the, the third, the third uh, reaction. A reaction with uh, aluminum uh, is reacting with uh, hydrochloric acid, giving rise uh, to this uh, chloride of aluminum, uh, a salt of course, and uh, uh, gases uh, hydrogen. Molecular hydrogen, okay? 
this is a common a common reaction uh, between uh, metal and uh, an acid and uh, in many 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 cases uh, the the ga uh, gaseous uh, uh, hydrogen is produced okay um, here ah i i have right in the wrong way the symbol of the aluminium okay so for aluminium here is one here is one so I can tell, uh, at the moment, I, I imagine here there is one, here there is one, okay? I move on. Here we have three atoms of chlorine. So I have to put three in front of, of the formula of the hydrochloric acid. And now I have to balance hydrogen. But when I go to balance hydrogen, I uh, notice that here I have two atoms of nitrogen, and I should have three atoms of nitrogen, as said here in the uh, in the part uh, in the left side of the, uh, the equation. So what I have to do? Nothing so difficult. I have to put here 3 divided 2, this ratio. It is only a passage. It, in, this is not, uh, this is, um, this not will be uh, the, the final, the final form we, we, we propose for the reaction, but only a passage, because after considering this ratio here, uh, we have only to multiply both, both the members of the, the equation by two, reordering this, this number. So, I can write, I can multiply both the member by two, Obtaining two in front of aluminium plus six six times the hydrochloric acid giving rise to Plus three H two. This is the form, the final form uh, of the uh, equation in a correct uh, in a correct form. The last. I would like to to leave you the last equation as a homework as homework. So it's important that you uh, start uh, doing something by yourself and uh, it will be a very good training. And uh, I'm preparing the other, other exercise of the same type of this, uh, of the exercise we, we, we solve in class. But, um, and uh, I will, uh, I will give you this, uh, this, uh, uh, these other exercises uh, by the classroom folder of this course. So uh, check the, uh, the classroom uh, folder of uh, fundamentals of chemistry and uh, in, a, in, a, in a few days you will find uh, more exercises uh, to do. Now we can hear uh, for, for any kind of problem. Uh, bye, dear students. See you next uh, lesson. Bye.